Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the difference between generative and discriminative models. So generative and discriminative models are usually discussed in the context of classification problems. Let's say given input x, we want to predict the output class y. So in case of generative models, we will calculate the joint probability that is the likelihood of x and y and we will predict the class for which this probability x comma y the joint probability is maximum. So to elaborate further on this, let's say we have only two classes. Let's say we have a red class and we have a green class and we want to predict whether the input x belongs to either red or green. So what generative model will do, it will find this joint probability of x comma red class, it will find the joint probability of x comma green class and if check which one is higher among two and if green class is higher the output prediction would be green and if red class is higher the output prediction would be red. So let's try to help understand this with the help of an example. So let's say we have two kind of points red points and blue points. So to prob so to find the probability of x comma y the generative models usually use this formula. So probability of y is calculated from the data and probability of x comma y, probability of x given y is then estimated using the data points. So in this case, let's say we have equal number of red and blue points. So probability of red is half, probability of blue is also half. Now probability of x given red. This is something we have to find from the data. So to, to calculate this, we only look at the only look at the red points and we to find this we assume that the distribution of x since x is a continuous variable and this is the axis for x, x is a continuous variable. We assume that the distribution of x is a normal distributed random variable given y. So given probability of x given red is a normally distributed random variable and and we can see that the mean of all the points, all the x points will lie some somewhere here around here and then if it's normal distributed it will look something like this. Right? So this is the mean. Similarly, so basically we'll find uh, using all these x values of the data points, we'll find the mean mu red and we'll find the sigma square red and then we plot this normal distribution in red. And similarly, probability of x given blue color with mean mu blue and sigma blue standard deviation. So it would be something like this. Now let's say we are given a new data point x somewhere around here let's say here x1 and we have to find which whether x1 should be predicted as red or whether x1 should be predicted as blue. So for that we'll calculate probability of x1 comma red which will be equal to probability of red into probability of x1 given red. So probability of red is simply half. Probability of x1 given red would be this value somewhere here. This value. So this value is let's say this value is let's say alpha. And we extend if we extend this let's say this value is here is beta. 
सो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स वन कॉमा रेड विल बी हाफ इंटू बीटा सो बिकॉज प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स वन गिवन रेड इज नथिंग बट बीटा एंड प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स वन गिवन ब्ल्यू इज प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ब्ल्यू इंटू प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स वन गिवन ब्ल्यू विच इज इक्वल्स टू हाफ इंटू अल्फा सो सिंस वी कैन क्लियरली सी दैट अल्फा इज ग्रेटर दैन बीटा वी विल प्रोडक्ट एक्स वन टू बी इन द ब्लू क्लास सो वी विल नॉट इज दैट सिंस प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ रेड एंड प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ब्लू इज इक्वल इन दिस केस फॉर ऑल द पॉइंट्स विच आर टू द राइट ऑफ दिस बाउंड्री लाइन शॉन इन पिंक विल बी प्रोडिक्टेड एज बिलोंगिंग टू द ब्लू क्लास बिकॉज अल्फा वुड बी ग्रेटर दैन बीटा because blue curve is above the red curve and for all the points to the left of this line we will predict the x point belonging to the red class because here the red curve is above the blue curve so this is how generative model works on the contrary discriminative models says that we do not care about what is the underlying distribution they say that we do not care about what is the probability of x given y so they say that we do not want to know the underlying distribution we just want to find a good enough threshold such that our predicted answer is accurate so what a discriminative model will do is something like that it will consider all the possible thresholds so that the points to the right of that threshold are labeled as blue and point to the left of the thresholds are labeled as red it does not care about the distribution it simply models that what is the probability of y given x so basically what this means is let's say it initially decides checks this for this threshold it says that if x is greater than let's say this value is x star so if x is x1 star so if x is greater than x1 star then probability of y given x would be 1 so 1 means blue color and probability of so we can say probability of blue given x is 1 and probability of red given x is 0 if x is greater than x1 star and vice versa so basically it directly aims to find the function probability of y given x such that the error is minimized so it will try various all the possible thresholds and it tries to minimize the error of probability of y given x so it wants this to be accurate and for that it will try various thresholds so that we get the maximum accuracy and probably after trying all these various different thresholds it will find an optimal answer somewhere here so let's compare the advantages and disadvantages of discriminative and generative models so generative models have been used by statisticians for a long time and the popularity of machine learning the discriminative models became more popular over time and let's see why is that let's say we have two classes red and blue again so red 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 and then we have blue 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 and then we have few outliers red red blue blue red so in this case we can see that to minimize the error the discriminative model will predict a boundary something like that because here the error is 
because we have three points in red which are misclassified which are to the right of this boundary and this will be the predicted line of the discriminative model but generative model is prone to outliers because what generative model is do let's say if we again assume that the distribution of x given red is the normally distributed random variable in that case what generative model will do is it will say that x probability of x given red the mean of these points would lie somewhere here and let's say the distribution comes out to be like this the mean of the blue points would come out to be somewhere here and the distribution would be like this and generative model will pr predict a boundary to be here and we can clearly see the error for this line so all the points to the right of this are predicted blue all the points to the left of this are predicted red and hence the error is equal to 7 because these are predicted red and these three are predicted blue so clearly generative model is not doing good because of our assumption because of the wrong assumption we made that the probability of x given red is normal since we do not know a priori that what is what would be the distribution and it only we only can assume a distribution by looking at the data it's difficult for generative models sometimes to produce good results and is very very prone to outliers so generative model had performed well if we had assumed a distribution of red and blue something like that so in this case we would have get got the correct answer but we couldn't predict that the distribution of probability of x given red would be distributed like this as shown in the figure that's why we got the wrong answer so generative model and dis discriminative models have advantages and dis disadvantages it is prone to outliers and to prevent that it need accurate assumptions regarding distribution of x given y given class y on the other hand discriminative models are less popular for the cases when we need to understand so we can't understand the true data generating process so although we'll get good classification accuracies but we will not be able to firstly we will not be able to make sense that why is it why the boundary is coming like that what is the distribution of x given a particular class secondly it might be performing poorly compared to generative models if the assumptions of generative models are correct so when generative models are correct they perform very very good if the assumptions are correct they perform very good and in that those cases generative models can perform better than discriminative models but otherwise in general when it is difficult to determine the distribution of x given y discriminative perf models perform better than generative models and hence they have become quite popular in recent machine learning algorithms so i hope now the clear difference between generative and discriminative models is quite clear thank you and see you in next video